This is Books of Titans, the podcast dedicated to the influences of influencers. The books that have helped shape prominent inventors, business leaders, athletes, intellectuals, scientists, and others. We'll talk about what makes these books such classics and at least attempt to have an intelligent discussion about what makes them so important and influential. Happy New Year, everybody. This is Eric Rostad. I'm going to do another solo episode here. I'm going to cover a book today called A Mind at Play, How Claude Shannon Invented the Information Age. It's a book uh, by two authors, by Jimmy Sonny and Rob Goodman. And this book was actually sent to me by the author Jimmy Sonny. I had not heard of the book or seen it prior to that, uh, prior to, to receiving it from, from Jimmy. And it was the first book I received for the for the book of Books of Titans project, uh, where I, I received one from the author, and I've de- I've received other ones since then, and I appreciate that, and and I do try to cover one or two of those books in my reading list each year. So this is the one that I read in my 2018 reading list, and I'm glad it was sent to me because I, I probably wouldn't have come across it otherwise, and it's it's on a topic that I'm interested in. So I, I do website development as my, my work, but I came to it through business, through business school. And so I didn't get a computer science background. I didn't really understand a lot of the history that led to our digital age, our information age. And so over the last few years, I've just picked up different books. I've picked up books like The Innovators by Walter Isaacson. The Cathedral and the Bazaar, and another one called Hackers, and those went. Those books all went into a lot of the history that that led us to where we are today, especially with computers, and the innovators more so in in the digital age, and Isaacson actually going back to the 1700s, I believe, with with Ada Lovelace and how a lot of her ideas are what, what eventually led to the, the digital age. So if, you, if you've read The Innovators, there is a two-page section about Claude Shannon, and, and then he's mentioned throughout the remainder of, of the book, just in, in different parts. So maybe, maybe 10 pages total in The Innovators. And so what this book does, A Mind at Play, the book that we're, we're covering today, uh, what this book does is, is take Claude out of the innovators per se, and, and just focus solely on on him and his role in the information age. And it's a big role, as, as we'll see later on in this episode. But um, if, if, you, if you do end up reading A Mind at Play and you haven't read The Innovators, you may want to start with Innovators just to kind of get a, a broad overview. Uh, I, also, I, I love Isaacson's writing. A couple of his books were, were, not, were on our reading list for this year. And and so it's just an enjoyable book, and it, and, it, and it does provide a good pad for understanding how Claude Shannon fits in to all of that. As for the authors of this book, they have written another one together, and that's called The Life and Legacy of Cato, Mortal Enemy of Caesar. Actually, the, the book's title is Rome's Last Citizen, and then the subtitle is The Life and Legacy of Cato, Mortal Enemy of Caesar. They are both former speechwriters, and so interesting approach and they they acknowledge how they approached the writing of this book in their acknowledgments section at the very end of the book and I, I want to read this because I, I think this is really cool how they how they wrote the book how they approached it uh, so I'm just going to read this it's the very first paragraph of the acknowledgments in the back this book could have been written in two ways downward or upward a book like this is written downward when it's the work of an expert straining to send a decipherable message to the rest of us without dumbing down, struggling to remember what it must have been like to to have been a novice. A book like this is written upward when it's the work of learners, struggling to communicate what they are learning as part of the very process of learning it. Books of the first kind come from the satisfaction of already knowing. Books of the second kind come from what physicist and bon bon viant Richard Feynman called the pleasure of finding things out. So that's how they wrote this book. They they wrote it from the perspective of of people coming to to it and and, and seeking to understand, seeking to understand what what Claude Shannon did. And it it, it 
it's complex stuff. I mean, he, he came up with ideas that we'll, we'll cover here in, in the next section, but ideas that had really never been considered before. And people described it as a bomb going off. I mean, it was, it was just such a, a drastic change in how people were thinking that, uh, that, that it was really, really quite astounding. But to, to not come at it from the expert point of view, it, 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 I can imagine it just took a lot of work to to write the book and, and to understand everything and then present it in a way that the reader can can understand it as well. So that's their approach. I, I like that approach. I've I've actually been to a few financial podcasts in the past, and most of them were by experts, but there was one that was by two guys who didn't know anything about finance and that was their whole thing with the podcast. They were gonna use the podcast to to find out about finance, to learn about finance. So they would interview people, they would uh, read books on it and then discuss it. And I actually ended up learning a lot from them because I was learning with them instead of being talked down to by an expert of them trying to, to remember what it was like to to not know about finance or, or be in my shoes. So I know jo- Jason, my podcast co-host, has also talked about this with C.S. Lewis. And C.S. Lewis would give the example of the fourth grader being able to teach a third grader better than perhaps the teacher could because they were closer to the time where they had actually learned that content. Before we head into the second section here, I just want to remind everybody we are on Patreon. That is patreon.com forward slash books of titans. The link will be in our show notes as well, but that's where you can support this podcast. We operate on the value for value model. So if you're getting value, you can return the value and we have different levels that you can give on a, on a monthly basis. And that helps us to cover the website, the hosting, and a lot of the work that goes into just having this all uh, continue on. So we'd love for you to be a part of it in, in, in that way. So who was Claude Shannon? If you're like me, you're saying, Claude who? And for for someone who who uh, really, as the the book subtitle says, invented the the modern information age, uh, it's it's someone it's someone you would think would have a a more noticeable name, maybe more like a, a Bill Gates or a Steve Jobs, but but he doesn't. And part of that was by design. He was he was introverted. He was a, just a humble man. And later in life, he actually had trouble speaking in public, he would just freeze up. And this is at a point in his life where people are just dying to hear him talk and, and he can't he can't even get in front of people to, to talk. So uh, really, really interesting in that sense. And then he, he was just always relentlessly curious to the point where he would just kind of move on. I mean, he would, he would, he would discover something and then want to move on and not dwell in the past and, and try to get accolades from, from that. Uh, what the work he had already done, but but to try to move on. So the basic thing that Claude Shannon did, uh, in, from what I understand, is he kind of took us from the analog age to the digital age. And before Claude, if if people were thinking in terms of we need to transmit this information from point A to point B, whether that was a video or uh, uh, image or spoken language. That, that all of these things would have to travel in different formats. And what Claude Shannon did was basically say, no, we can turn these, we can cl- turn all of this information into binary digits. Basically what you hear about with the zeros and the one, the ones, uh, the true, true or false. We can turn those into binary digits and then we can communicate through those binary digits. And that's that's how we get all of our information now. It, it's uh, it's sent that way. It's in, encoded with whatever or decoded with whatever device we're using. Puts it back in that original format and without any loss of quality. So you're listening to this podcast, and and I've sent it from my computer, and you are receiving it on your device. It was all sent through bits, and Claude Shan is the person that that discovered this. And it, it was such at the time, this is 1940s when he, when he was, uh, when he wrote about this, it was such a, a different way of thinking that, 
uh, contemporaries called it a bomb. They, they said a bomb had gone off. Like it, it was such a revolutionary way of thinking about this. And so Claude Shannon had taken ideas from Boole. And, and so that's where you get the this terminology of Boolean operators, uh, such as and, or, not, if. I, I tend to think of it a lot as if-then statements. So if, if I'm going straight, uh, keep going until I hit a wall and then do something else. Um, if, if then statements, so bo- Boolean. So he, ba- he basically took these algebraic ideas of Bool and transferred them into communications. So Claude was working at Bell Labs and he was in a place where he, he could make these connections. I want to read one, one quote from the book, consider him not only as a distant forefather of the digital era, but as one of the great creative generalists of the 20th century, not solely as someone who laid the foundation of the information age, but as someone who trained a powerful intellect on topics of deep interest and continued to do so beyond the point of short-term practicality. And in this sense, Claude reminded me a lot of, of Benjamin Franklin and da Vinci in that they had so many interests that when they would pursue new fields of thought, they came at it with such a broad range to where where a, a lot of the people that they were working with in these fields who had spent their entire lives in those fields, they they couldn't see things outside of that. They were they're so far into that niche that they, they weren't able to see a bigger picture that uh, that Claude could bring because he was bringing in ideas and, and experience from all these different places. So that was neat. And then it was, it was fun reading about Claude. I mean, here's, here's some of the other just interesting things about him. He was a jazz lover and to clear his mind, he would just put on jazz albums and then improvise with his clarinet. So he would play along and that was kind of his, his way to, to just chill out. Uh, he would also drop in on the chess clubs in Washington Square. So he's a big chess player. He he would make chess boards where he would be playing a, a computer. And, and again, he's, he's inventing these things. I mean, he's creating these machines that can play him in, in chess. And then he would go up to Harlem and he would dance the jitterbug. And we, we learned about the jitterbug in uh, the Malcolm X book, the autobiography of Malcolm X. But just really interesting guy. I mean, just kind of had a, a wide variety of interests and, and just pursued him. He was courted by a lot of the secret agencies. Of course, we're talking about the 1940s here, so World War II, and Claude was an expert in communications. So encrypting communications, obviously very important. Uh, Claude working at Bell Labs, I, I believe they're the ones that set up a, a, an encrypted and secure phone line between Roosevelt and Churchill. And so uh, Claude is, is around all these things and is, is courted by a lot of the three letter agencies that we, we all know. He also met contemporaries uh, like Alan Turing, Albert Einstein and John von Neumann and was sought after and, and taught and studied at institutions such as MIT, Harvard, Stanford, and Princeton. So just a a neat life, a neat guy. And if you're interested in in technology and and how it all came about, this this should be a book that that is on your list. So in this final segment, I'm going to cover the one thing. And this is a new segment we're going to we're going to be doing in our episodes going forward, but it's the one thing that stuck out to us the most in the book. And in this book, I, a weird thing happened to me where I, I read one particular paragraph and, and had a light bulb literally go off. I, I, I I could feel something in my head happen and this never happens. So this may sound like crazy talk, but it, it happened in this book. So what I want to do is read that paragraph and then describe what was going on in my head and why it was so unique. And, and it it's not necessarily a, a, a key takeaway or, or a one thing takeaway of, about the life of Claude Shannon, but it's, it's related to the information age. So here's the paragraph. 
What does information really measure? It measures the uncertainty we overcome. It measures our chances of learning something we haven't yet learned. Or, more specifically, when one thing carries information about another, just as the meter reading tells us about a physical quantity, or a book tells us about a life, the amount of information it carries reflects the reduction in uncertainty about the object. Where there is perfect certainty, there is no information. There is nothing to be said. And that's on page 142 of the hardback version of, of the book. So what this said to me and, and the, the epiphany or the, the light bulb that, that happened for me it, it is related to a question that I get a lot on social media about the Books of Titans project. And that is, how do you remember what you're reading? Or how, with, with all the books that you're coming across, how are you, how are you capturing all that? How are you taking notes and, and that sort of thing? And the question was starting to bother me and I, and I couldn't really pinpoint why, but I, I was noticing something in what was happening is that I was actually getting more clarity of thought the more I was reading. And my assumption before this project would have been that I, at this point I would have been in information overload uh, just with different books, different topics, b- different subjects too much, like too much to try to, to try to capture. But, but what, what has happened is it's, it's made certain things stick out. So if I see an idea in a novel and then see that same idea in, in, in autobiography or a biography and also see it in a business book, you know, that that idea has, has some stickiness to it and that it's important. So yes, reading more is going to introduce you to more ideas, but it, it also has this, this crazy effect of, of clarifying thought as well. And so when I came across this paragraph, it also introduced another idea, I guess, of, of why that might be the case. And so what I got out of this paragraph is that if you don't know something about a topic, the, the possibilities are endless, so if you don't know about a particular person and there's a book about that person that you can read, that person could be anything. That person could be a circus clown or an inventor or an entrepreneur. And you might have certain ideas about that person, but it, it, the, the possibilities are endless. So, so as opposed to you starting from nothing about a person, you're, you're kind of starting from a point of, of everything. And so reading that book is actually going to narrow down the the that topic for you as opposed to to giving you more to more inf- more information uh, i i hope that makes sense i'm kind of i'm still kind of working through this in my head but it it was just a, a insight that that i captured from this from this paragraph in the book well that's going to do it for today i want to encourage you to go to the books of titans.com website i just completely revamped the site. And for each book that I read, I give my reasons for choosing that book and adding it to my, my list. I, after I've read it, I give my thoughts. And then there's a section on each page for each book where you can also submit your comments and, and your thoughts about the book. So one of the main reasons I started this project was to connect with others who, who were reading the same book. So I'd, I'd love your thoughts. I'd love to have you comment on the website so others can see that as well. And I've, I've also released my 2019 reading list. So it's, a, it's another 52 book list. And you can see it. It's all in order of, of what I'll be reading, when I'll be reading it. And I'm also most active on Instagram. So that's probably the best place to connect to us on social there or, or Twitter. But, but Instagram gets more, more love. We'll be back next week with another episode of the Books of Titans podcast. And until then, keep reading, keep listening, and keep improving, and keep it real.